Well, here we are at the Auburn Court Duesenberg Company with our good friend Doug Prey. And Doug, every time I come here, my mind is just blown, and we're standing here in front of another one of these absolutely stunning cords. Oh, this is this is as good as it gets. This is a 1937 812 cord Westchester, non-supercharged. This is Gordon Burig, the most famous car designer in the world. This was his original pure design. This is what the way he drew it: the fastback, no exhaust pipes on the outside. This is his. This this was his dream. This is what he built. This is what he designed, and this is a perfect example of that car. It's well done, older restoration. It's very nice, very well sorted out, very correct, original in every way. I'm so proud to own this car for a few years, and we're getting ready to sell it. We're going to go to the Barrett Jackson auction uh, in Florida here in a few weeks, and we're going to run this across the auction block and find a new owner. But this is this is really special because it is it is so complete, correct, and original, and such a good driver for a front-wheel drive Cord, 100 mile an hour car, drive it down the highway at 70 miles an hour with traffic. This one is a little unique in the fact that Westchester means the type of interior it had. They also had a Beverly, which was a different interior. Westchester stood for Westchester, New York. Beverly stood for Beverly Hills, California. This is a Westchester, so it's got the Westchester interior but 98% of all Westchesters were born with an interior that was called broadcloth. It's basically a wool material, and it would equate to today a uh, pool table top. So that's the type of material that was in most of these. The closed cars had broadcloth, they call it English broadcloth, and the open cars had leather. But 2% of the closed cars were ordered from the customers with leather. So this is a Westchester with leather interior, which makes it kind of extra neat. So it's actually got the pleated Westchester interior, but done in leather, not in wool. And I think it's just absolutely beautiful done in leather. This is all done in original colors. And you can see everything from the, the polished step plates to the wool carpeting. Um, to the beautiful uh, burgundy colored leather interior. And then my favorite thing about a cord, and always has been, is the dash panel. If you look at this dash panel, it was very much aircraft style because E.L. Cord o owned an airline and he was all into uh, Lycoming engines, airplanes, and he put the dash in here to look like it came out of an airplane with the engine turning and all the instruments. I think it's the most beautiful dash, one of the most beautiful dashes ever put in a car. So four door car, you can haul the family, the windows roll up, it's quiet. And remember in 1936, 37, when these were delivered and built, people were still driving Model A Fords. National speed limit was 35 miles an hour. Most of the roads were dirt or gravel. This is a 100 plus mile an hour car. And in fact, a lot of cars have a little plaque on them that guaranteed to be driven over 100 miles per hour by Ab Jenkins, who was a race car driver and a, a test car driver back in the day, he held all kinds of records in one of these cars. So it's a 100 mile an hour car in 1935, and this is as great of an example of it. So unique. First unibody construction car built in America. Notice, no running boards, low to the ground. And everything had running boards back then. Everything, everything. had running boards. Front wheel drive, transmission's up front, a four speed transmission that's shift by a robot. So if you look back in the interior, there's a little lever here. And Chad has done a video of it, but simply to put it in gear, you just move this little lever with your finger. And that's how you shift it. And then the robot actually shifts it for you. And we'll put a clip that, we'll put a, a link in here so you can go catch that video where Doug gives us an in-depth walkthrough of how this transmission shifts because Back then, you had running boards and you had a stick that stuck up in the middle of the floor. That's right. Well, when your transmission's up here, you'd have to have some pretty long arms to make yep. that happen, and it didn't work. So, and, and so real complex, most complex car built in 1936-37 in the entire world. I mean, this was a complex, high-tech car. And back then, a lot of people, you know, the car of the future, the future's here. Back then, everybody said that. This was it. Well, this is what my father described when he first saw one as a kid go by. 
and he's, you know, you're seeing Molly Ford on the street, and this goes by. He says something out of Buck Rogers is what he called it. It was, <laughs> it was like a rocket ship. I mean, it's fast, it's sleek, and they were expensive. New Ford, you could buy Ford six hundred dollars for a brand new Ford. One of these twenty five hundred towards three thousand dollars, depending on the accessories you got. Now there weren't a whole lot of extra accessories, but they built in. You could, you could get a radio that was extra. You could get a heater, that was extra. Most cars were always sold without heaters or radios. And there's a few other little things you could add to them. Uh, you could add bumper guards and a few things like that. But what is so unique is all the little nuances they had. Like if you wanted to get air in your car, the cow vents just lift up from the inside. You get your air in to cool you off. And this but, has two, where a lot of cars just had one. That's right. So this they, was like true. your first personal climate control. But there's a separate knob on each windshield and you can crank the knob and the windshields open up so you can just get all the air in straight from the windshield. So I think that's really a, a neat feature. Um, hideaway headlights is one of the most popular features. You know, a lot of cars, Corvette came out with the hideaway headlights. Cord was the first to do it. The new cars, of course, are electric and this has a cable and a crank. And so you just would crank the headlights out at nighttime and turn your lights on and now and then you do the left one, then the right one daytime you just close them back up i mean what an innovation for the time remember how big headlights were next to your radiator oh they have a big there. huge thing yeah. sitting up here and here this is you know again no big radiator shell and these beautiful louvers i mean this streamline they kind of say art deco styling is just you know absolutely incredible uh so everything about this car was just so unique cord hubcap special they put the holes in them actually for cooling of the brakes just over the top in design craftsmanship detail on what they did i mean what could be better than a 1937 cord westchester with a leather interior that it's truly been sorted out it shifts it drives it's fast it's fun you can tour with it you can go to shows and get some first place trophies with it it's just, to me, kind of the ultimate pre-war classic that are priced right. I think courts should be bringing a whole lot more money than they are, but this is, this car, we can't restore this car for $200,000, and it won't cost anywhere near that uh, at auction. So this is going to be a great, great addition to somebody who just wants to drive a court. Plus, you guys just checked it over. Yeah, we've done everything. We've looked at everything. Brakes are great. The shifting is great. The speed, the power, the way it starts and runs. It's just really, really a good car. And one other design feature we want to point out is the back of this car. Because the, you could get different styles on the rear on some of these. In 37 you could. Not in 36, but in 37 they would put a bustle back to give more trunk area. This is called the Fastback, and I like the Fastback best, and most people do, but they added the bustle back trunk uh, just as you know an option so you'd have more space for, for, your, for your luggage. But uh, you can see there's not much space in here. I'll open the trunk up for you. They put one lock on the right side. The same with the four doors. There's only one lock on the right front door. You lock the rest from the inside. And then you open in the spare tire, so you can see why they put the bustle back on there. Wasn't a lot of room not in these. A, not a whole lot of room, not a whole lot of room. But everything down to the, the original uh, cord close, cloisonne logo, the coat of arms, the original glass lenses that say Cobro on them, everything on this car was done the way it was done in 1936 and 37. Just a real nice example. This is not a concourse quality car, but it's a very nice show car and a first place winner. Uh, and it is an older restoration, but boy, for one to just drive, sort it out, everything is right. Even all they, when it was restored years ago, you notice the fender welting is the color of the car. That's the way Core did it. Most cars would just have black and you can put it back together with black and it looks fine, but this is correct. So they did it the right way. Uh, the colors on the interior were done the right way. The color of the paint is a color from 1937. So it's just, just a nice example. Everything like when I went to a show and showed one of my cords, this little hinge for the, the gasoline, 
door, I didn't chrome it. But I got dinged a point. This one is chromed, it's done right. The original cord lock, the original cord cap, the little strap that holds the door open original, exactly the way they did it back then. The little canvas color cover in there to keep gasoline from spilling. Those are little nuances that for judging are real important, but that's original. It would judge original. Nothing has been modernized on it. And that's the thing about you looking these cars over is you know that. Yeah. You know it better than anybody. We know cords and this is one that we've had a few years and uh, and like my son said, he was out driving. He goes, man, he says, maybe we should keep this one. This is such a good car. <laughs> but we'll, we'll move it on to a new home and then we'll have more cords. We've got a cord fighting inside. We're finishing up a restoration on. We've got a cord cabriolet we're finishing up a restoration on. We've got Beverly in there that we're servicing. We have several Auburns and, of course, a Duesenberg in there. And uh, we figure we've got about five years worth of work, so we don't need to. We can't keep them all. No. You know, we gotta, as much as you want to, yeah. sometimes you just you can't. You can't. So, uh, but, but just look at that styling. I mean, Gordon Burek had it figured out, didn't he? Oh, absolutely. The cars are stunning. And the car is stunning today. And like you said, imagine at that time when all your neighbors driving Model A's. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that, even today, I walk into this factory. I've been here 63 years since I was a kid. And I walk in and I see these cars every day. I stop and take a double take. It's like, that is the most beautiful car I've ever seen in my <laughs> life. And it, and it never gets old. Not a bad way to go to work, is no, it? No, <laughs> it, it's just a lot of fun. The people we get to meet and the customers and the people in the club it's just it's just a great great life great experience it's moving on to my son which is the third generation and then even my granddaughter she may be the fourth generation that continues this on so it keeps going so we are the auburn cord duesenberg company we're the largest supplier of auburn cord parts in the entire world and we sell parts all over the world uh, we service the cars that come in from all over the country that have issues and they need us to solve their problems and Plus, full-blown restorations, ground up, sell the parts. We can't, we kind of do it all. So we are Auburn Core Duesenberg. And this one's going to move down the road. It's going to, yeah, it, just it, a few weeks. So and going know, to Barrett Jackson. So it's if, not coming back. If you're wanting a good, good, fun, driving, nice, correct core done right, this would be the car. Well, it's beautiful. There's no doubt about it, and it's going to provide somebody with a ton of fun and enjoyment. There's no doubt yeah, about look, that. Yeah, look at this color. It's, it's a unique color. It's not white, and it's kind of a what? A, what would you call it? It's almost just like an off, a little bit of an off. It's an off white, but kind of with a gray look. Like to an it. eggshell, maybe? Yeah, no, eggshell is more of a yellow. Oh well, yeah, think. that's true. I think it's more of a gray. I don't know, uh, but it is. It's a beautiful. I mean, it shows good with the stainless and the chrome on it. It's like you know. And, what a beauty. And, and like you said, the big thing about it is you guys have, and this car's been here for a few years, you've driven it, you've, take, you've touched it up, you've checked things out, you know, you knew what little things needed adjusted and you guys have done that. Yep, yeah, there it is, ready for a new home. So somebody buy it and enjoy it and then we'll help you if you have any issues or trouble. So it's a beautiful car. Can't wait to see it roll across the block here in the middle of April, not very long away. And uh, somebody is gonna have a ton of fun with this thing. Oh yeah. So, well, Doug, as always, I appreciate you spending some time with us. And not only do you spend time with us, you teach us about these cars. And that's what's so great. Your knowledge is so deep on these things. And the fact you share that with us and all the viewers and, and teach us all something. Okay, that's... well, we didn't. Since we're teaching, like you just brought it up, look at the hood real quick, under the hood. That's, yep, we need to do just, that. Just so they can see what it looks like under there. <coughs> uh, standard engine, standard air cleaner on it, done. Uh, done very well not overdone just what it is a good running good driving correct engine engine compartment now one thing that isn't correct and i'm going to put it out because somebody will call you and say hey that's not correct you can see the horn bugles are chrome they're supposed to be black but when the car got here they were chrome now, i'm not going to paint black over the chrome bugles they look good but if you were going to show it at Auburn, you might want to paint the bugles black. But they are the factory horns. The factory horns are just been chrome plated, and I kind of like the look, but that's not, they, the factory did not chrome them originally. But still a, a, a masterpiece under there as well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 125 horsepower, which was the standard engine, 165 to 170 with the supercharger, but 125 horsepower, four speed transmission. 
you know, 100 mile an hour car, do whatever you want to do. Hydraulic brakes, um, you know, great, great, great car. Definitely a car that was ahead of its time. Yep. So, well, beautiful. Well, we can't wait to see it roll across the block. As always, we want to thank you, Doug, for spending time with us and showing us this stuff and teaching us. We got a lot of cool stuff from here. We got an entire Auburn Court Duesenberg Company playlist on the channel. You'll want to check that out because we've done a lot of neat stuff here. You have shared a ton of knowledge with all of us, and we appreciate that. So good luck with this at Bear Jackson. I'm curious to see what it does and see it go across the block. And I'm even more excited for the new owner because I yeah. think they're going to have a ton of fun with yeah, it. Yeah, it's going to be a lot of fun. So, okay, well, we'll see you on the next one. Sounds great. Thanks for Thanks. watching, everybody.